In this video, we're going to introduce the notion of something called the dot product. So dot product. The dot product also has another name. It's called the inner product or the scalar product. So let me show you what it is. So say we have a vector, which we'll call u. And let's just say it's given in component form as u1 comma u2 comma u3. And you can do this for vectors in the plane as well. I'm doing it here for a vector in space because we have three components. And say we have another vector v and this is v sub 1, v sub 2, and v sub 3. Then we define the dot product as follows. Then the dot product dot product is given by the following formula. So the notation, it's u, and it's actually a dot. That's why it's called the dot product. So it's u dot v. And it's really, really easy to compute. All you do is you multiply the corresponding components. So you do u1 times v1. Then you put a plus sign, and then you do u2 times v2. Then you put a plus sign, and then you do u3 times v3. So you end up with a number. That's why it's also called the scalar product. Scalars are elements of something called a field and typically the fields we use in mathematics typically are the real numbers or complex numbers. So that's why it's often called the scalar product because the dot product results in a number and so you can think of a scalar as a number. It's also called the inner product. So inner product. There are other inner products in higher level mathematics there's actually spaces in mathematics called inner product spaces. So uh, there's a whole field of mathematics surrounding uh, inner products. It's actually really deep and beautiful. Before we go through the properties, let me just give you a really simple example of the dot product. Let's go back to two dimensions. Let's look at u equals, let's say we have 1 comma 2. And let's say v is equal to, I don't know, how about negative 2 comma 1. And let's find the dot product of these two vectors. And if I did it right, this example should be quite enlightening. So let's see, u dot v. So as the definition says, we multiply the corresponding components. So 1 times negative 2. And then we add, and then 2 times 1. So negative 2 plus 2 is equal to 0. So the dot product of these two vectors is 0. So this leads us to an important fact. Whenever you have that the dot product of two vectors is equal to 0, this implies that the vectors are perpendicular. So u is perpendicular to v. This gave me an opportunity to use this symbol here. The symbol means perpendicular, perpendicular. It also means orthogonal. So orthogonal is another word for perpendicular. So two vectors are perpendicular if their dot product is zero. So it goes the other way as well. So it's an if and only if statement. If the dot product is zero, the vectors are orthogonal. If the vectors are orthogonal, the dot product is zero. Let's go ahead and graph these two vectors in the plane and convince ourselves that this, is, in fact, is true. So here's the y-axis. Here's the x-axis. So x, y. And let's see. The vector u is 1, 2. So we go right 1 and up 2 from the origin. And we draw our vector. So this would be our vector u here. So the green vector is u. 
And let me switch colors. Let's go to yellow. So V, we go left two and down one. So this would be, um, oh, uh, sorry, up one. Whoops, up one. So we're here. Whoops, almost messed up. <laughs> That's no good. It's a positive one, right? It's a positive one. So let me just blur that out there. So this yellow vector is the vector V. And this green vector is the vector U. And you see they form a 90 degree angle. So the vectors are indeed uh, perpendicular. Pretty cool. All right, there's a couple of properties regarding the dot product that uh, I want to briefly discuss. So let's go ahead and talk about those. These properties can sometimes be somewhat useful. So properties. So the first property uh, says that the dot product is a commutative operation. So if you have u dot v, that's equal to v dot u. And it's pretty easy to see this. Let me just go back up and show you. Uh, this was the definition of the dot product up here. And so because multiplication is commutative, you could do this. You could do v1 u1 plus v2 u2 plus v3 u3. And this is the same as v dot u. So we've essentially proved it in less than 10 seconds. So u dot v is equal to this. And then multiplication is commutative, so you switch the multiplication and therefore you've essentially switched the dot product. So the dot product is a commutative operation. Two, this one we won't be using too much in the problems that follow, but it's good to have it just for convenience. If you have u dot and then v plus w, the dot product actually distributes over addition. So this is actually u dot v plus u dot w. So pretty powerful. Three, this one does come up in some of the problems we'll be doing. Uh, it basically says if you have a number c, notice I didn't put an arrow above the c. That's because c is a scalar, it's a number. So a number times the dot product, well, it's going to be a number. So it turns out you can write this as cu dot v, and you can write this as u dot cv. So you will see stuff like this in some of the problems that follow. In particular, you'll have something like this, and there'll be a number here like 3 or 4. So what you do is you pull the number out, and then you find the dot product, and then you multiply by the number. Let, let me give you an example right away so you see uh, what I mean by this. Let's keep it really simple. Say we have u equals 1, 2 and v equals 3, 4. And let's say we're asked to compute u dot 5v. So what we can do in something like this, in a situation like this, is we can pull out the 5. We can write this as 5 parentheses u dot v. And then, so now we just compute the dot product of u and v. So 1 times 3, so it's 5 times 1 times 3 plus, and then 2 times 4, multiplying the y components. So this is 5 times 3 plus 8. So this is 5 times 11. So we end up with 55. Another way to do this problem would have been to first compute 5v. In fact, let's go ahead and do it. Let's first compute 5v. So if we have 5v, this is 5 times 3 times 4. And this is called scalar multiplication. So you just basically distribute the 5 into the components of the vectors. So this is 15, 20. So now we can take the dot product. We have u dot 5v, but u is 1 comma 2. Let's go ahead and write it in. Dot, and then 5v is 1520. It's kind of fun to do it both ways. I, uh, I usually don't do this, so it's a little bit more interesting. 
So 1 times 15 plus, and then 2 times 20. So 2 times 20. So this is 15 plus 40, which is 55. And that is called beautiful, right? So both ways work. So just a, a nice way to convince yourself. Sometimes it's good to convince yourself that things work because that way it stays with you uh, for a longer period of time. So four, the next property says if you take the zero vector, which is the vector whose components are all zeros, and you dot it with any other vector, you get the number zero. So note here, the zero vector, let's just say we're in two dimensions, would be the vector whose components are zero. If it was three dimensions, we would have zero, zero, zero. If we're looking at n-dimensional space, then you have n copies of zero. You can look at vectors in any dimension. Five is extremely important in higher level math, and it does come up in the problems we're doing, but again, it's something that you don't necessarily have to use. If you dot v with itself, you end up with the magnitude of v squared. Let's go ahead and talk about why this is true, because it's worth it, and why not? We have a few, few minutes. Say we have v, and it's equal to v1 comma v2. So if we dot v with itself, what that's going to do for us is, well, let's just write it twice. So v1, v2, dot v1, v2. So what does this mean? Well, the dot product says that we multiply the corresponding entries. So it's v1 times v1 plus and then v2 times v2. This is essentially v1 squared plus v2 squared. And I could finish the proof in one line here, I think, but let me, oh, let's do it. So this is equal to the square root of v1 squared plus v2 squared squared. You might say, why are you doing that? Ah, it's because this square root piece here, this is the magnitude of v. So we have the magnitude of v squared. That's essentially a proof. The box with an x indicates that the proof is complete. So we started with the dot product of v with itself, and we end up with the magnitude squared. So quite a useful formula um, to use. Again, this here, if you're not familiar with this, this is equal to this. You might remember this from uh, the past. I believe we probably talked about this before. This is the magnitude or the length or the norm of the vector. Uh, there is another formula, which I'll call 6. This is one you may have seen before, maybe in another class. The angle between u and v is given by, and I should say the angle theta, so let me specify what the angle is called by the following formula. So cosine of theta is equal to u dot v over, and then the magnitude of u times the magnitude of v. So this is the formula you can use to find the angle. Here theta is between 0 and pi. So sometimes uh, they'll give you two vectors in the problems, and they'll ask you to find uh, the angle between them, and so you'll, you'll do that. And the very last one, 7, is just a reformulation of this. So if we take this equation here and we multiply both sides by um, the bottom, we would end up with u dot v equals the magnitude of u, the magnitude of v, cosine theta. So it's an alternate form of the dot product. Let me highlight this in another color just to make a really, really key observation, then we'll finish this video. So this formula kind of justifies uh, what we were talking about earlier. If we have that u dot v is equal to 0, 
then we'll get a zero here on the left-hand side. And as long as u and v aren't zero, that means cosine of theta is zero. That would mean that theta is equal to pi over two. That would mean that the angle between the vectors is pi over two. In other words, the vectors are orthogonal. Conversely, if the angle between the vectors is pi over two, that means they're orthogonal. And that implies that u dot v is zero because the cosine of pi over two is zero. So, so if this is zero, then theta is pi over two and the vectors are orthogonal. If the vectors are orthogonal, then the cosine of pi, then theta is pi over two, the cosine of pi over two is zero and the dot product is zero. So this formula kind of clarifies what we said earlier about the dot product being equivalent, dot product equals zero being equivalent to the vectors being orthogonal. So whenever the dot product is zero, the vectors are orthogonal and vice versa. It's been a 16 minute video. I didn't think it would take this long. I thought it would take four minutes. I was wrong. <laughs> if you've made it this far, congratulations. Good luck.